Hi everyone and welcome to this practical training session on CMEMS biogeochemical products for the Arctic Ocean. My name is Simon Boitard and I will be your trainer for this course. This course will uh, take place in the Jupyter Notebook environment. So before starting, there are two things that you need to know about Jupyter Notebooks. To execute a cut cell, hit the play button here or use the keyboard shortcut shift enter. If for any reason the kernel is not working anymore in the top menu, click on the refresh button. Then in the top menu, click on run and run all above selected cell. So let's start this training session on the seasonal variations of the biogeochemical parameters. So first I will uh, give you a short introduction, then I will present the product and the required Python modules. Then we will learn together how to explore the NetCDF file content and how to map the biogeochemical parameters in the Arctic Ocean at given dates. Then how to monitor the evolution for a whole year by computing and mapping monthly means. And eventually you will learn how to plot time series over several years for a given point. So most marine wildlife lives in coastal areas. The Arctic region is rich in nutrients on which phytoplankton feeds, creating the basis of the marine food chain. An increase in nutrient concentration due, for example, to agricultural runoff, sewage, vehicular and industrial emission may lead to a phytoplankton bloom and to a so-called eutrophication phenomenon. Eutrophication results from the excessive input of nutrients in an ecosystem and is one of the great threats to marine environments. The success of nutrients favors the development of primary producers, like algae or cyanobacteria which, in return, reduce oxygen availability when they die and decompose and light penetration. In extreme cases, marine life either dies or flees the zone. These effects directly impact a number of pivotal activities in the area, such as fisheries and tourism. The objective of these exercises is to use the CMEMS biogeochemical products to visualize some typical coastal biogeochemical features in the Arctic Ocean. This training is divided into four steps. Each step is designed to highlight different ways of plotting parameters. In particular, you will learn to handle and explore NCDF files uh, as the CMEMS products are delivered in the NCDF file format. Then you will learn to map chlorophyll and oxygen concentrations at given dates. You will Discover how to compute monthly chlorophyll and oxygen concentrations to monitor the chemical composition of the Arctic Ocean over a year. And then you will learn to retrieve time series to perform multi-temporal analysis. So what are the products we are going to work with during this session? This example is based on the, on the Arctic Ocean Biochemistry Analysis and Forecast product. This product has a 12.5 km horizontal spatial resolution at the North Pole, equivalent to one eighth of a degree. It uses the stereographic projection. The product uh, consists in daily mean fields interpolated onto standard grids in NetCDF format. Variables include 3D nutrient concentrations, phytoplankton and zooplankton biomass, oxygen concentration, chlorophyll concentration, primary productivity, and light attenuation coefficient. This table sums up the main characteristics of the products we are going to use. 
So here the geographical coverage, a list of the um, available uh, parameters, the horizontal spatial resolution, the vertical spatial resolution, the temporal resolution. If you want to learn more about the product, I invite you to visit the dedicated product page on the CMEMS web portal. You will also find detailed information in the product user manual and the quality information document. The products used throughout the notebook have been downloaded ahead of this training session and are stored in the data folder. But where is this folder? Here you can see the general architecture of the repository for the biomodal products. Here the data folder stores the products we are going to use throughout the workshop. The docs folder has the product user manual and the quality information documents. And the out folder will be used to store the um, figures we are going to generate during this training. And this is the notebook we are working on. So if you wish to download the data yourself, please be sure to have CMEMS user credentials. If you do not have them yet, you can create them by hitting this link. Moreover, you will find below the parameters used to download each dataset from the CMEMS portal. The first dataset contains um, different biogeochemical parameters over the Arctic Ocean for the whole 2019 years, 365 days. The two other products contains the daily means of these biogeochemical parameters from 2016 to 2019, but for a particular point. If you need guidance about the different services for downloading CMEMS products, please check the corresponding tutorial. The first thing uh, we need to do when working in uh, a Jupyter notebook and in and with Python in general is to uh, import the libraries we are going to use. In this notebook, we are only going to use five libraries. The operating system interface library for managing path, creating directories, the num Pi library to carry out scientific computing with Python and managing arrays, the XArray libraries to handle NetCDF files and uh, carry on computing on these on the variables they contain, the matplotlib library to create uh, scientific plots and the base map toolkit to uh, plot geographical data onto maps. So our, our first cell will be dedicated to importing these libraries into the Jupyter Notebook environment with the keyword import. Some libraries will be imported with a namespace, the library's nickname. So the NumPy library will be imported as NP when we will want to call a NumPy function, uh, we will call it through np dot the function. So let's execute our first cell with the keyboard shortcut shift enter. Okay, so the libraries have been properly imported um, in the Jupyter notebook environment as no errors has been generated. 
So if you want uh, later to practice this notebook on your own environment, you may need to install the library first. Because here, the requested Python libraries have been installed on the CMEMS Jupyter Hub ahead of this training session. Hence, no installation is needed during the session. But when replaying this notebook on your own infrastructure, you may need to check your Python version and install the Python libraries used in this notebook. The following part gives you hints on setting up the appropriate environment for this notebook to run smoothly. Um, for so for a smooth running of the notebook, you need to work with the Python v 3.7 or above. So this command line checks the Python version you're working with. So here we're working with the 3.7.3 Python version. If you need to install Python, you can do it with this command line. And if you're using the standard An Anaconda 3 installation, you can install the needed modules executing the following command in a new cell. This will install NumPy, XArray, Matplotlib, and Basemap libraries. So now that we have uh, set up the appropriate environment, let's explore the contents of the CMEMS uh, biogeochemical products for the Arctic Ocean. So we are going to work with the Arctic Analysis Forecast Bio um, model product. First, to get you start with, we are going to explore this data set, which is the data set containing one year of data for several biogeochemical parameters. First, we need uh, to define the root path, the path pointing to the data directory, and the file name, the path of the netcdf file, which is the root path plus the file name. Now that we have told Jupyter which data we are going to work with and where it is, we need to open this data. We are going to open the data with the open dataset function from XArray. And then we will browse interactively the content of the file. So here you can see that the XArray dataset returned by the open dataset function has several components. First, the dimensions, depth, the 365 days of 2019 and the X and Y dimension. Then several coordinates like the latitude, the longitude, time, and the data variables. Here, the chlorophyll, the silicate, phosphate, oxygen, and nitrate, which depends on one or several coordinates. You can access the attributes of a variable by hitting the show hide attribute button which will display basic information about the products like the unit or the standard name. Now, if you want to store the file uh, content into a X-ray dataset called fin and print the content of the dataset, well, we'll execute the following cell. So here we open the dataset and store the content into fin and we display the basic information about the returned X-ray dataset. So we can see here that the displayed informations are the same as the information displayed here. You can also check the global art attributes of the product that are also available here. So as we saw, um, the CMEMS uh, products are distributed in the NetCDF file format. And a NetCDF uh, file is a common way of storing scientific data. It contains the dimensions of the data, the variables of interest, depending on one or more of these dimensions, and general information about the product, the global attributes. 
So if you want to store one attribute in a variable, for example, here, the title of the, of the product can execute this cell. You see that now the title variable contains the title of the product we are working with. If you want to display the data variables in your dataset, use the data vars argument. Here it displays the available variables in the product. If you want to display the coordinates, it's the same principle. Same principle as well for the dimensions. If you want to store the values of a variable in an array, type myarray equals fin.variable.values. For example, for the time value, we are going to store the time variable values into an array called var time. But you can call it uh, another way if you wish. And then if you want to check the content of the array, type print myarray, for example, for var, for var time, we see that the time variable has 365 values each per day in 2019. January 1st, 2019, January 2nd, 2019, January 3rd, 2019, etc. down to December 31, 31st, 2019. And you can see that the variables depend on the time dimension, so the variables are daily means for the whole 2019 year. An alternative way of displaying raw information about the NetCDF uh, file is to use the, the ncdump command, uh, which is a Linux command. And when calling a Linux command from a notebook, you need to insert an exclamation point at the beginning of the command line. Okay, so as you can see, the ncdump command line displays the same kind of information as xrdataset.info python code. A difference worth to be noted is that in the analysis product over the Arctic Ocean, the command line shows that the time variable is stored as hour since January 1st, 1950. And this unit is not easily readable by a human. And uh, the open dataset function of XRA conveniently interprets the time coordinate as a date when ingesting the product, the date we have read here. Okay, so now that we have uh, learned how to explore and manipulate a uh, NetCDF file with the XRA library, we are going to learn how to generate plots uh, of the variable of interest from these NetCDF files. Now let's start with the map generation. Uh, in this part, we define again the root path and the file name, even though it is not necessary because it has been defined earlier and uh, it has been stored in the Jupyter Hub environment. We do it again here uh, in case if later when you practice the notebook, you don't need to execute the first part and you can directly jump to this one and start from here. Let's execute this cell. And we open the data set again. And uh, we define the name of our variable of interest. So here, oxygen and CHLA, but it could have been uh, nitrate and phosphate as well. So 
So in order to plot the variables of interest, we will need the time coordinate, but also the latitude and longitude coordinates and variables. This is the purpose of the following cell, which stores the oxygen variable of the FIN X-ray dataset in var oxygen, same for the chlorophyll. And then here we get the values of the time variable and of the longitude and latitude variables. And then we close the FIN dataset to spare memory. So as previously shown, uh, the dataset contains biogeochemical parameters concentration for the whole 2019 year. In this first exercise, we will plot the variable of interest for August 20th, 2019. Of course, you can try to plot different dates after the exercise if you want. So we will uh, focus, focus on a particular day, but the product contains um, the values for 365 days. So we need to define uh, date plot one, the dates to plot with a format compatible with var time here. Then the xarray.cell function selects the nearest date to date plot one. Okay, in the time variable of var oxygen. And then we print the selected date to make sure that um, the select method has worked correctly. And we do the same for the chlorophyll. So var oxygen and var CHLA now only contain the var name variable for the selected date plot one date. You can note that the var name variable does not depend on the time dimension anymore, but only on depth x and y. As there was only one remaining date, date per data set, the cell method automatically removed the time dependency on the var name variable. As we saw earlier, open dataset interprets the time variable as a date. The precision of this date is too high, nanosecond here, as we are looking up daily values. It would be more practical to work with date objects um, limited to a daily value. To do so, we can use the isType function, and we will use the day time unit here. But be aware that you can use other time units, like years, month, weeks, or hours, minutes, seconds, and milliseconds. Uh, so this is what we do here. And then we print the difference between the native date format and the IS type reshaped date format. You can see here that we got rid of the useless part of the date. Now let's plot the data on August 20th, 2019. So to plot the data, we will use the subplot function. Plot both variables on the same figure with one subplot per figure. A subplot is called an axe and each axe probability can be defined independently from one another. For plotting over the Arctic, we will use the base map NP steer projection, which is the North Polar Stereographic Projection and corresponds to, to the stereographic projection used in the product. We also define the following parameters. The center of the desired map domain the X on which to create the base map instance, the bounding latitude, because this projections, the north, the polar centered stereographic projection, uh, are square regions centered on the north or south pole. And the bounding longitude is at six o'clock and the latitude cycle 
bounding light is tangent to the edge of the map at the centered longitude. You can also play around with the defined parameters later and see how they affect the map generation. To plot the actual variable, we will use the p color mesh function of the matplotlib library, which creates a pseudo color plot with a rectangular grid. So here we create one figure with two axes on one row and two columns, thanks to the subplots function. Then we create for the first variable a base map instance using the appropriate projection and setting the appropriate parameters. We add features on this base map, for example, coastlines, countries, the continents, meridians, and parallels. Then we generate the plot of the variable of interest on the longitude and latitude grid. We multiply the, the chlorophyll concentration by 10 to the power 6 in order to display this variable in milligram per meter cube rather than kilogram per meter cube. We add the color bar generated by P color mesh and we add the title. Then we create a second instance displayed on a second axe to plot the oxygen variable. Eventually, we save the generated figure in the out repository. Let's check that it is saved correctly. And out, we see that there is the newly generated figure. So here we have uh, displayed the chlorophyll and oxygen concentration on the same figure for August 20th, 2019. Now, what if we want to make a regional zoom? on a particular area. This part we will zoom on the northeast coast uh, of Canada, where there is a chlorophyll peak here. In this example, the zoom is done by defining a tighter plotting window and zooming in on the area of interest. But the VAR CHLA and VAR oxygen still um, contain value for the whole Arctic Ocean. Later, later, you can try to crop the variables to your area of interest extent by calling the cell function on var CHLA and var oxygen, and then create your map. Remember, we saw how to use the select the cell function of X-ray um, earlier with the time variables. It works the same with the longitude and the latitude variable. For the regional zoom, we will use the steer projection, which is the stereographic projection, the same projection as in the product. To use this projection, we will need to define several variables, like the center of the desired map domain, and the longitude latitude of the lower left hand corner and the upper right corner of the desired map domain. And just to show you alternative way of uh, plotting the variable of interest, we will use the contour f function of the matplotlib library, which is used to draw field contours. It determines variables isolines and fills the area of iso values with a determined color. So this cell defines the plotting window of the regional zoom. And this cell, as earlier, uh, creates a figure with two axes to plot the chlorophyll on the regional zoom on the left and the oxygen on the right. 
and then we save the figure. Once the plot is uh, generated, it may take some time. You can see that we have displayed the chlorophyll and oxygen concentration on a regional zoom. So we have now seen how to plot different biogeochemical parameters over the Arctic Ocean for one date. We also learned how to zoom in an area of interest. Now that you know how to generate maps, you can try to do the same things for other dates and, uh, and different biogeochemical parameters like nitrate or silicate. Now we are going to move on to the second exercise, which is generating map with monthly mean data. In this part of the notebook, we will create monthly means of the variables concentration out of their daily values. This will help us summarizing the evolution of the different biogeochemical parameters over 2019. We will have a closer look at the chlorophyll, oxygen, nitrate, phosphate, silicate concentrations. Again, in this exercise, we define everything from the beginning. If later, when you practice, you want to directly jump to this exercise without um, executing the precedent cells. So we define the root path and the file name. We open the same, we are still working with the same data set, having the variables of interest over the whole Arctic Ocean for the 2019 year. And we define the name of the variable of interest. Oxygen, chlorophyll, etc. Then we store um, the variables values in appropriate variables and we multiply them by the appropriate scale factor in order to display them with uh, appropriate units later on and we get the longitude latitude and time variable values then we close the fin xr dataset in order to spare memory Now we're going to create our monthly means map. So uh, in the product, the variables are stored as daily values. So in order to create monthly means map, we are going to average monthly the variables before plotting them for each month of the year. So this cell below allows you to choose the variable to plot. For selecting a variable, you need to uncomment by deleting the hash character um, a, um, ahead of the line and comment all the other lines. So here we will start with the chlorophyll variable, where we also define the var name, the unit. These variables will be used for plotting in the title and the minimum values and the maximum values which will be used to generate the plot and set up the minimum and maximum values of the color bar. To compute the monthly average out of daily values we are going to use the resample function. This function returns a resampled object. It handles both downsampling and upsampling. The resampled dimension must be a daytime like coordinate. Here we will generate the monthly mean by using the time equals m argument. So let's resample our um, chlorophyll, our daily chlorophyll variable to a monthly chlorophyll mean. And here we check um, the monthly data to verify that the averaging 
um, was done properly. And we can see that now the chlorophyll uh, variable has a time equals 12 dimension, so one value per month. Let's check here, January, February, March, April, May, June, July, August, etc. So we just averaged our daily value for chlorophyll to monthly values. And now we are going to plot um, the averaged uh, concentrations of chlorophyll for 2019. We are going to generate 12 monthly maps on one figure. For this, we are going to create a figure with 12 subplots on four rows and three columns. To automate the generation and avoid writing 12 times the same code to create similar maps, we create a for loop on the month. Here. And then we get the appropriate date of each month. We create the base map instance on the appropriate X corresponding to the month the current month, and we plot the monthly data for the current month. And then we save the figure. Let's execute this cell. It may take some time for the processing to happen because we are generating 12 figures, saving them and displaying them. So once the plot is generated, we can check the monthly evolution of the chlorophyll concentration uh, for 2019. So when can we deduce from these plots? When plotting the chlorophyll concentration, we notice that May, June, May, June and July are um, the month when the chlorophyll production reaches its peak. This is strongly related to the great sunlight conditions in the Arctic during this period of the year. Hence, June was the month of maximum chlorophyll concentration in the Arctic Ocean in 2019. This is also the month of the summer solstice, when the sun shines the longest in the northern hemisphere. The rest of the year sees really low chlorophyll concentration, as the highest latitude remains in the dark most of the time, like November or December. Um, when later you plot the oxygen concentration, you will notice that the area where the chlorophyll production was the most intense, like north of Canada or western Greenland, are the regions that experience the lowest oxygen level in July. Because in those area, most of the oxygen has been consumed by algae and phytoplankton in June. Uh, now we are going to plot uh, the same maps of the monthly um, average values, but we will also add the sea ice contour on top of the layers. Because despite the ongoing global warming, the Arctic Ocean is not free of ice. The Northern Pole is covered in ice the whole year. And this is an important parameter to take into account when studying bio geochemical parameters concentration in the Arctic Ocean. This is why in this part of the notebook, we plot the same figure as above and we add the contour of sea ice on the variable concentration. The sea ice contour is read from the CMEMS physics products. These products are presented in uh, detail in a dedicated notebook. So as for the biogeochemical product, we load the file and variable of the physics product. Let's explore 
the file content. Here you can see that this dataset contains the fractional the C ice area fraction for uh, 12 months in 2019. January 2019, February, December, monthly mean. To map the C ice contour, we will use the uh, F ice variable from the physical product, which represents the monthly mean C ice fraction per product ground cell. The values range from 0 when the pixel is free of ice to 1 when a pixel is 100% covered in ice. To add the sea ice contour to the map, we will use the contour function and set the contour line at 75% of sea ice fraction. So here we load the variables from the physical product. So the FIs variable with the geographical coordinates as well as the time coordinate, which are different from the biogeochemical products. And so in this cell, we create the level variable so that in the contour function, when plotting the var f ice, we only display one line describing where the ice coverage is greater than 75%. Then we use the same logic to create the figure. We loop on the month to create our 12 plots, generate a base map instance on which we plot the chlorophyll variable with the associated using the associated longitude and latitude coordinates and on top of this we add the sea ice contour with the longitude and latitude coordinates that we just got in the previous cell let's execute the cell again it might take a little time because it's generating 12 plots So here you can see the oxygen of uh, the chlorophyll concentration for the 2019 year with the sea ice contour here. Just displayed here. So you can see that during the winter month the sea ice contour is wider and the sea ice shrinks in summer. And when plotting the crow fire concentration, we notice that only the regions completely free of ice experience algal blooms here. When sunlight reaches the surface of the ocean. When later you will plot the oxygen concentration for year 2019, you will notice that the areas are always covered by sea ice uh, experiences constant oxygen concentrations. The northern Russia coast has the highest oxygen concentration variability. Last exercise of this notebook, plotting time series. We have seen how to globally monitor the surface chemistry in the Arctic Ocean and how to relate it to the sea ice extent. In this part, we will learn to monitor the evolution of biogeochemical parameters from 2016 to 2019 using um, the two other data sets we downloaded ahead of this training session. We are going to focus on two points along Norway coast where aquaculture farming is intensive. So in this cell, we plot the locations of these two points. Define the longitude 
and the latitude of the points. And we create a figure with a map instance and plotting the points location. You can see here where the points are. So again, we need to define the netcdf file and the variable name. In this exercise, we'll have a closer look at the chlorophyll, nitrate, zooplankton, and phytoplankton biomass concentration. So this cell uses the exact same um, Python code as we have used uh, previously, defining where is the data, the file name, the name of the variable of interest. If you want to visualize the content of the chlorophyll variable, you can execute this cell. You can see that there are daily values for four years, 2016 to 2019, which is a lot of data. And so uh, we're going uh, here to plot the time series of the three parameters on the same figure. So here we create a figure with one ax and it will be a 2D plot. So a plot of the variation of the parameter concentration along the time dimension. We do it for the phytoplankton, the nitrate, and the zooplankton. The phytoplankton with, will be displayed in green, nitrate in blue, and zooplankton in red. And we just use here the plot function of matplotlib to generate simple 2D plots. Then we add the title and we save the figure. And we can display the monthly, the daily time series of the evolution of the parameters concentration for uh, three years. So these plots uh, highlights the annual trends of uh, nitrate, phytoplankton, and zooplankton concentrations on point one. Because here we have selected the file corresponding to point one. If you want to do the same analysis for point two, you can comment this line and, and comment this one and execute the cell. And so we see from the plot that an increase in uh, nitrate concentration, blue plot, here, for example, an increase in nitrate concentration here or here or here, is quickly followed by a phytoplankton bloom, the green plot here, here, here. This bloom causes a nitrate depletion as the phytoplankton consumes the nitrate to grow. And eventually, the phytoplankton is uh, consumed by the zooplankton here in red in the autumn. So first, an increase in nitrate concentration, then nitrate causes phytoplankton to grow, and then the phytoplankton is consumed by the zooplankton. It is also worth to note that the higher the nitrate concentration in the spring, the bigger the phytoplankton bloom. Here, higher nitrate concentration leads to a higher phytoplankton bloom. However, zooplankton levels remain the same from one year to another, no matter the strength of the phytoplankton bloom. 
This situation may lead to a eutrophication situation. This phenomenon occurs when there is too much nutrient inputs in the environment, leading to an excess of phytoplankton, which is followed by a strong oxygen depletion when the algae die and decompose. This excess of algae is also responsible for reduction of sunlight access. If the depletion is too severe, it may cause the marine wildlife to flee the zone and the farmed species to die. So congratulations, you have reached the end of uh, this session on CMEM's biogeochemical products for the Arctic Ocean. We would like to thank you for your uh, interest and your attention. We hope you enjoyed uh, this training provided by the Copernicus Marine Service. And now uh, let's try to download uh, new data and variables and to access and visualize.